here with head coach John Cooper after an 89-69 win over Olivet College. Coach, your opening statement. Well, I mean, I thought in the first half we, you know, we seemed to be willing to settle in many ways for the shots we were taking. Um, and obviously some of those shots were open, but I thought if we would uh, be more patient and probe the defense, then we would get even better shots. Uh, and, you know, obviously you're, you're dealing with a group that maybe not as much experience with that. Um, and, and we took some shots, I thought, that may have been open, but we just didn't get ball reversal enough to uh, make their defense move. And then we turned the ball over too many uh, times. We were careless with the basketball. Uh, you know, we get up and then we don't close the half the right way. We, I think they ended up on a 9-0 run or something like that, 9 or 10-0 run there at the end of the first half. And so um, obviously I wasn't happy with that. And then, of course, the uh, last play there, we just don't, just don't execute poor decision. And they end up getting a layup um, out of that. Uh, second half, uh, we were a little bit better defensively. Uh, you know, they're, they're two kids. I mean, you know, Washington, who, you know, was really good, as well as uh, Ewing, who was terrific uh, tonight and made shots. And, and, you know, and they made it hard, and, and they hit some shots. We didn't – we took a lot of threes and, and quite frankly, didn't make um, a lot of them. But uh, we were able to get the ball inside. You know, I thought Logan was a presence. Um, so that certainly helped. And then, of course, I thought Marcus did a good job of rebounding. Uh, so that that helped us also, um, but you know we've got to get better. Um, but you know conference play is upon us, and so we've got to get our eyes focused towards that. And and glad to come back from the uh, Christmas break and get a chance to get our get our feet wet and, and get going and get back up to speed. Uh, was there anything specifically that uh, you had in mind coming into this game that you wanted to work on, either given the competition or given the fact that you're on the, the brink of MAC play? Any, any kind of well, I mean, a couple of things. One, I mean, you know, what they've shown defensively, they played zone and they're really aggressive and they'll just sort of trap you um, at different times, which will uh, catch you off guard. Um, I thought that was good for us to have to face that. We hadn't really played a team that's done us uh, done excuse me that's done that to us um, this season and, and and I think more than anything and then also facing their pressure you know how well do we handle a pressing team and they show it in a lot of different ways um, they can show it after a miss or rebound they'll get into it so it's really not usual but uh, they do a pretty doggone good job of that so you know I think if anything hopefully this game gets you ready for the press um, you faced uh, some zone and, and opportunity to work on your zone uh, zone offense, and then from an offensive perspective, I think more than anything, you're just trying to uh, see for rotations. Uh, it's really the last opportunity to where you probably start don't shrinking um, your bench a little bit. Your bench tends to shrink in conference play and, and just give some guys and get a, uh, a last look at some guys and, and sort of go from there. Was there anything that stood out to you in terms of non-conference play that you learned from, say, day one? until now uh, about your team? I, I guess there were some things that you sorted well, out. Well, I mean, I think, you know, coming in, anytime you're, you're as new as you are, you're trying to figure out, okay, where are we going to get our scoring from? I mean, you have an idea, but when you're dealing with this many inexperienced kids, you're not sure when the lights go on, you know, how is that going to happen? Um, how are we going to be able to guard man-to-man uh, -man defensively when you've got so many new kids and, and you're trying to teach? Um, I think that's it. Are we going to be able to rebound? You know, obviously we thought Precious was going to be probably our best rebounder, and we lose him probably about three weeks before the first game. So that certainly um, took us for a jolt when we lost him just because of his ability to rebound and go hunt down balls. Um, so now you're trying to figure out what are the other areas you're going to get it in. And one of the things we went to is we've got to, you know, you look at Michael, his numbers rebound, and we told him he's going to have to go rebound more. Ideally, you'd like him not to necessarily have to as much because he can get outlets and then be ready to blow up the court. But, you know, we have to do it a different way. So I think that's one of the things that, you know, we discovered um, as we started the game. Um, excuse me, as we started um, this season. And then, you know, I, I tell you, you know, as uh, Marcus has come along and been able to be really productive for us, so that has certainly helped us too also, along with Michael. We know that. Is Michael feeling okay? I, I know for a while he had a tonsillitis. So yeah. I mean, I, 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 it's funny. I look at him and he doesn't have the same burst or the same energy that he had um, before now. Uh, I do think that the tonsillitis has affected him. 
and and I also think too this is this is the time when you're starting to feel what it's like to be a college player at this level, and particularly how teams are coming at him um, on the defensive end. He's seeing a lot of different looks, whether teams are running and jumping him, whether teams are being physical with him. So he's having to make some adjustments. But I would agree with you. I, had, I don't think he's yet back from an energy standpoint and a burst standpoint as to where he was before we went on that um, Central Florida trip. I know you were concerned. Uh uh, partway through the non-conference schedule about getting some of the juniors uh, untracked. Uh, Logan seems to have uh, made that step. Double-double tonight. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about the rest, though. Well, I don't – you know, it's like I said, I just sort of don't leave it alone. I'll leave it alone, I should say, and, and hope that he continues to do what he's doing. And, and as I've told you with Logan, it's not about necessarily the points. Uh, it's more about activity. I think he missed three layups tonight, too. I mean, I think he missed three point blank shots. One of them he got a foul call for, but, you know, if he makes those, then his numbers are even better. Um, I didn't think Rod Mills started the game off very well. I just was not happy with his start to the game. Uh, he was obviously able to come back a little bit, but you can't have. I think he had three turnovers in the first half, and he just didn't play with the aggression that you need to play with. And then, of course, you look at um, Dion's numbers. Um, you know, Dion's Dion, seven boards, and, you know, but. Two turnovers that were poor turnovers that led to uh, transition opportunities for them. I just need Dion to be solid, rebound the ball, and, and do the little things. Just bunnies in general of, uh, I guess, when you go back through the film and oh, look geez. at some don't, of the bunnies. Don't, don't remind me. Yeah, I mean, we had a lot of opportunities around the basket that, quite frankly, we did not finish. Um, we've got to do a better job of that. And, and I think it's always the concern um, that you have in games like this. Um, this is when it takes uh, maturity you know, to be able to come out and execute and, and handle your business in a game. And no disrespect to Olivet because I thought they played well and, and were extremely well coached. But this is a time when you've got to be able to come out and, and be focused and, and really, um, you know, uh, put your will on the blueprint of this game.